Good morning, folks. The Evening News Earthquake Condition Index jumped into A range the last two days on these dark coronal holes, including the equatorial bulb. Last night, a large earthquake struck the Maluka Sea near Indonesia. There was not a tsunami produced. Looking at the full readings list, we see a lot from 7.1 to 7.4. We also had an aftershock that read above 6.0 on about a dozen meters. USGS has kept the big one in 7 range, but dropped the aftershock down below 6 magnitude. Also took another above average tremor in Montana. And to the northwest of that, Pavlov Volcano began a new eruptive phase. Looking north and south of the equatorial bulb reveals two thin dark plasma filaments presenting our primary solar eruption threat for now. They will face Earth over the next few days and if they destabilize could produce Earth-directed CMEs. Meanwhile, the solar flaring is on the floor. No activity despite the return of the mega sunspot. He's even got friends developing all around him and maintaining a delta class. Just nothing happening in terms of flares thus far. We did see a gamma ray burst earlier this morning out of Corona Borealis. Solar wind speed and density in yellow and orange respectively, climbing just a bit, producing a slow ramp up in geomagnetic perturbations. Soho Lasco shows Venus exiting the coronagraph while Saturn is swinging in to conjoin the Sun. If you missed last night's second video, there were a lot of updates, including confirmation that the solar polar fields definitively are not done flipping yet. It is linked for you right below this video and a top recommendation. The October climate report for the U.S. has been released and there is no doubt that it was slightly above average in terms of temperature. A stark contrast to 2014 so far, seen here, much more diverse. Let's quickly jump to the ice cover where you see the Arctic way up from its record low, actually closer to average than those low marks set in 2012. Meanwhile, Antarctica spent most of the year shattering record high ice marks, but has dropped below last year's records, still well above average. You can bet November's report will look a lot different as frigid cold and snowstorms have dominated the 11th month so far, records falling by the day. The duo of a northeast low and a high to its southwest drive Arctic air down the convergence. It continues. We've got frost and freeze warnings to the Gulf Coast, followed by inclement weather this afternoon and tonight. The North Atlantic low has elongated, and the primary flow actually becomes the shift of Mediterranean moisture up a line between Paris and Munich, deep purple for tonight's alert zones. The New Zealand convergence is sticking around with secondary flows behind it. It indeed produced some bad weather in the last day. Meanwhile, the moisture flow in southern Australia comes up and quickly spreads east and west. No shock for tonight's alert zones there. This week's Fly on the Wall episode will upload in a few hours and will cover all the recent major updates. We do about an hour every Saturday. And if you are not yet a member at suspiciousobservers.org, it is a backbreaking $3 per month or just 20 bucks for the entire year. We greatly appreciate your support. Got current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.